Now the lovely box plant, often used as hedging, uh, which has been used for the last 200 years because of its ability to take being clipped rather well. It's beautiful little oval leaves that can be lime green when they first come out and then as they mature going into a deep emerald green colour. Unfortunately, it's under attack. It's under attack by a fungus called box blight and it's been under attack from a box moth caterpillar. Now both of them show similar signs of the poor plant defoliating and discolouring in its leaves. The box moth caterpillar only came into our gardens 2011 and it's already wreaking havoc. Let's take a look at the two separate problems of box, how it occurs, what it does and what you can do about it. First up is box moth caterpillar. Now what it is, is comes over and it bites and sucks the foliage, causing a great deal of damage. That's the caterpillar itself. But if you take a look, I've got this covered over here because I have an actual caterpillar in here as well. If I can find him out and about. Oh, there he is just there. To identify whether it is box caterpillar, take a look at the plant itself. You'll see a couple of things. The first signs, of course, as I mentioned before, is yellowing of leaves and leaves falling off, leaving bare branches. But you'll also notice some webbing in there as well. That's part of the uh, reproduction uh, cycle of the, uh, of the eggs and caterpillars into, in, into moths. And uh, I'm going to cover this over so none of it escapes. <laughs> I don't want it going around my boxes in my garden. So what happens is the moth comes in and lays the eggs. The eggs then can become caterpillars. Caterpillars eat. They also produce that webbing as they're eating. And of course, then they go into the final stages of metamorphosis where it becomes the moth, which goes out to lay more eggs. In fact, in one year, there can be three generations of caterpillar eating your box. Now, there are three separate ways of treatment. First off, there is a chemical. But if you're using chemicals in the garden, it can harm the biodiversity of your garden. And personally, I prefer not to use any insecticides in the garden. So I will use more organic ways of controlling the pest. First of all is manual, where you go in and pick the caterpillars off that you see. You can also use a pair of scissors to snip some of the foliage that has the webbing off and strip it out from your bush. And if you've got small uh, Buxus bushes, it's relatively easy to do. If they're bigger, obviously, it's a completely different task. But you won't be on your own in doing that. Birds will also be helping you as well. Things like magpies and blackbirds and even some of the tits that come into the garden, they will also eat caterpillars. There are also the parasitic wasps as well. They do a pretty good job in protecting. Now, the next method is biological control, where you enhance some of the creatures that live in the soil to be able to come out and attack the, uh, the uh, caterpillars themselves. And that's nematodes. Nematodes are small, almost microscopic worms that live in the soil. You can buy extra ones of those to top up your soil level. And then they'll migrate from the soil to attack and kill the caterpillars. That way you're not using any chemicals and it's a natural biological way to control the box moth caterpillar. One of the things to keep in mind, not only from spring right the way through the summer, you're having different generations of these caterpillars attacking your box, but during the autumn time, they're also looking for places to be able to get in as a habitat to overwinter. And they'll be ready to get going, eating your boxes in spring. Now, over the other side, you have the fungal attack. And what that is, is two sister funguses that are attacking. Calinectra pseuda naviculata and Calinectra henricottiae. To identify box blight, it's a little easier. Unfortunately, this one has already completely died. But on a plant that is infested, there'll be a combination of dead, dried, uh, brown and yellow leaves and uh, normal green leaves. And whole patches die out and end up looking like these dry branches here. You'll also notice on young foliage, stripes of black on the stems and on the underside of leaves, especially during damp days, you'll see white spores under there. There'll be no webbing and no caterpillars, 
unless of course you're on a plant that's got both of them at the same time. Now treatment of this isn't that easy. First off, like any fungus, make sure there's plenty of air moving through the plant. Sometimes if box are trimmed really tight, they go very dense. And when it is wet and warm, that humidity is perfect for the fungus to get to work. So let the plants be slightly more open, prune some of the plants around the outside so there's a free flow of air. That's helpful. The second thing is, is the moment you start seeing the infestation of box bite, you can cut it out. Cut it completely out. Don't leave it in the garden as well. Get completely rid of it. Don't compost it or anything. And keep pruning it out as it happens. There's a good chance that it'll grow back and maybe come back to life again, but there is an equal chance of it catching it again. There are sprays that you can use, but again, I do not like using chemicals in the garden. I much prefer an organic option. But with box blight, it's very difficult. Eventually, the plant will start to look considerably scrappier. And if you can see here, it turns a plant from that to that very quickly. And when the plant finally dies, it's always best to look for alternatives to box to plant in the garden that doesn't suffer for either of these two problems. Now the caterpillars themselves are really focused to the family of boxes, specifically the box hedging. The box blight, on the other hand, can affect others that are within the boxes family, such as Pachysandra, which is a creeping plant, and Saracocca. If you see the symptoms, it's always best to look up and check, but predominantly these two problems are very specific to this one particular plant, Buxus and its cultivars. So if you've got a box plant that has got the box moth caterpillar, there are ways to control it. Nematodes are pretty good. If you've got the fungus box blight, it could eventually continue to look scrappy and look worse and worse. You really need to take that away and start with something new. So the advice remains the same. If you're thinking about putting a hedge in, I wouldn't use box. And if you've got an existing hedge and you're taking it out, again, don't use box. There's plenty of other alternatives that are really good to use in your garden that don't suffer from either of these two problems. Varieties include the evergreen short-leafed holly Ilex cronata. Lenicera nitida is another one, which is a shrubby honeysuckle. Pittosporum, yew, euonymus. Osmanthus are all good natural alternatives to box that each have their own personality. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more free content like this. Please remember also to switch on your notifications so I can notify you on the latest exciting videos.